here. It's four o'clock already. I know it is a lovely day to have been uh, learning a lot this morning, and it is 10, July the 10th. So thank you very much for being here, and congratulations for your enthusiasm. So I am Alberto from the University of Oviedo, and I'm going to uh, present this workshop on innovative um, pedagogy in bilingual education. So I'm going to do one thing, and one thing only. This is what we are going to do. We are going to look on how to use subtitling in here. How to use subtitling in bilingual education. In particular, what we are going to do is how to use audiovisual products in a more efficient, motivating, and productive way. And we are going to do it in the following way. First, I'm going to explain <laughs> the basics, uh, the nuts and bolts of subtitling, and how can we apply this to film. Second, I'm going to report on some data and information from a project we, um, we conducted in secondary education. And then in the third part, uh, you are going to work a little bit. Okay, so this is, it. This is going to be a hands-on uh, workshop. I know we do not have computers, but we have mobile phones, we have laptops, and we have even paper. So no worries about it. Okay? This is about technology, this is about something else. So, starting by the beginning, um, let me tell you that I worked uh, a little bit on translation. I was a professional translator and interpreter for a while. And there were some techniques there, some things that I learned, and I thought that they could be applied into language teaching. So I thought it was a very good idea to bring translation into the classroom. I'm talking about teaching English as a foreign language and teaching uh, contents through an additional language. So, okay. However, when I joined the university and I started working with foreign languages, I very soon realized that uh, translation is not welcome, useful, in language teaching. Indeed, I would say that translation has been stigmatized in language teaching. Um, it is not considered as a positive uh, practice, as best guidance in the world. Um, we could probably identify many elements, many reasons for that, but if I had to choose one, only one, I would probably say that the most uh, relevant responsible is the grammar translation method. Okay? Why? Because it has grammar translation method. Again, grammar translation method. For those of you who work in languages, you know that the grammar translation method um, brought about very dark times in language teaching. What do I mean by this? Very boring classes where you translate it from one language into another, no interaction, no student center, no nothing. Okay, not having uh, considered best practices today. So, think, close your eyes, you don't need to close your eyes, but think about translation <laughs> in the classroom. <laughs> think, that was, 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 that think, how did you experience translation in the classroom as a student of any foreign language, not as teachers. So when you were studying English, German, whatever, how was translation into the classroom? Think about it for 10 seconds, no more. I drink water in the meantime. <laughs> yeah. Probably, if I asked now, we will have 20, 25 different things, but I'm sure that many of you, 10 or 15 of you, would say that it was something similar to this. Let me read it for you, okay? Because I'm not sure that you can see that from behind. Final absurdo, absurd ending. Eran las ocho y media de la tarde, it was 8.30 in the evening, y el detective Lorenzo Fresnos, and the detective Lorenzo Fresnos, and so on and so forth. You know what I mean. This brings to this, absolutely. This is incredibly boring. This is something that you cannot use in the classroom. It doesn't matter whether or not students learn grammar. It doesn't matter whether or not the students learn the structures. If they learn the language, they will hate the language. If they are not motivated, we know that. They will not, they won't learn. If they are not motivated, they will not speak the language. Okay? So when I started this project, I went to high schools and schools of primary education in Asturias, 
The response was quite similar to this. No, thank you. <laughs> that is quite uh, logical. However, translation is not only parallel texts. Translation is not translating word for word. It is not rendering from one uh, language into the other, literally. Okay? Translation can be fun, believe it or not. It can be fun. And, more importantly, <laughs> translation can be useful in here. Translation can be useful in content and language integrated learning. That is the message I wanted to convey. Ten minutes. Not, not finished yet, but uh, we are almost there. So, the question is really, yes, really. You have to believe me on this, okay? How do we learn something? What is the most effective way to learn something? Practice. First, what do you know about translation? Christina mentioned something this morning about translation. What do you know about translation? Let me know things you know about translation. Anybody? What you said before, it cannot be that in the You have to translate the, the idea, the expression, but not the Very good. So there are more than one types of translation. You have literal translation, word for word translation, you have free translation. Very good. Is it the same? I mean, is translation or are translation and interpreting the same thing? No. No, why not? Because we've seen a sex all this morning. <laughs> because, um, I mean, the intonation you use can make, like, the same sentence can mean two different things. Absolutely, but even more than that. What is the difference between translation and interpreting? The context. Yes, but very good. You all can see it. The meaning. The meaning. Yes. The meaning in the context. Easier than that. Even easier than that. It's just in front of you. The difference between translation and interpreting is what? The channel, the medium. Translation is always written. You write translation. Translation means texts. You translate one text to the other. Interpreting is oral. So interpretation is what you've got in the European Union. It's what you've got when a famous football player is talking and then there is somebody there who is interpreting into the other language. Translation is great, okay? That is the most uh, meaningful difference. This is even more important. Have you ever used translation in your classes? Yes. yes. And good results, outstanding results, wonderful. Good. Okay, starting from the other side, bad experiences when using translation. You said, oh, that means <laughs> scary. Any bad experience? I mean, there, there is not such a thing. I don't need what? to tell you that. There is not such a thing as something absolutely good, right or wrong, in therapy. It depends on, on us. It depends on how you exploit it. Translation is not good or bad. The way you use it is what changes everything. That is why we are here. Okay, but have you any experience using translation in the country? We or our students? Both. Both. With my students, for example, when they have to do a presentation, sometimes some of them didn't feel enough confident to look for the information in English, so they used to look for the information in Spanish and then translate it. And the translation was so literal mm -hmm. that at the end it's very artificial. What they Keep translate. this in mind. That is of paramount importance. Keep this in mind. Translation means rendering one message from one culture to the other, from one language and one culture to the other. That is not literal translation. Okay? When you have to translate something, you have to transfer the message from one language and one culture to the other one. So forget about literal translation. You want to say something? Yes. Um, from my view, from my experience, uh, what, I have, what I have known is that, for example, if we are inside the class, maybe you can say the word straight away. You say the translation of the word, and that's fine. Because you say, and they understand straight away. Yeah. On the other hand, I think that it would be nice if you give um, a full definition about the things but in English. That is However, absolutely you think I need to be longer, yes, absolutely. at the time. Absolutely. But the best, uh, I mean, the, the most, uh, the worst <laughs> of all, if when you, if you find, for example, that the students, you say you have to write about something, they go to the translator yeah. and they yes. do the composition, <laughs> yes, for you, and you see straight away, that I have used the translator. Don't use translator. Yes. 
Yes, they use it. But you mentioned a couple of ideas which are very important to be clear. First, translation is not prohibited. Okay, you know there is something which is called code switching or translanguaging. Thank Williams invented it in the 70s. He taught in English and he used visuals in Welsh. No problem. I mean, bilingual education. This is bilingual education. This is not monolingual education through English. Remember that. So if our students in primary and in secondary education know how to say pulmones in English, and they don't, sorry, lungs in English, and they don't know how to say pulmones, well, that is quite a ridiculous example. But you know what I mean. So if they know the vocabulary, the technical stuff in English, and they don't know it in Spanish, that would be a failure. Okay, so translating from time to time is allowed and clear. Nobody says the opposite. That is code switching. I do it very often in my classes at university. I sometimes, how do you do that? Code switching is very important. Theoretically, and I don't want to go too much into that, the best thing is explaining in English and then rephrasing in Spanish, not the other way around. So theoretically, the best approach is explaining it to English first, uh, fixing the concepts first in the foreign language, and then, then you can repeat in Spanish. Or, as you said, rephrasing is something that we have to practice as teachers. Because if a student says, uh, asks for a definition, you say you provide him or her with a definition, and he, he doesn't understand it. If you keep on saying the same thing, the same definition, he will not understand. This is something that we do not suffer in our mother tongue, because this is our mother tongue. You are not native speakers of English, as far as I know. You will never be. I am from Tijon. I will never be. Um, a native speaker of English. So what? There is not a problem there. Okay? So, before you mention something very important, how do you learn? By something said, practice. So we learn by doing. This is what we are going to do now. Okay? Who wants to say anything else? Mm -hmm. Not only. Okay. 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 Remember, you are not translating. I know this sounds a bit even, even less academic, but you are not translating. This is not the European Union. Okay? <laughs> you are translating one match and one to the other. That is, important. that is the key here. And I'm, I'm going to explain why at the end of the session. It has some scientific empirical evidence. Okay, you are interested. Okay, from this time. She knows not what, <laughs> what did you eat? Try not to use Spanish when you interpret. 
Is it clear? Ideally, you could uh, be grouped in groups of three, four people. No more, no less. Three, four people. Perhaps even in the world. Right now. Okay? Three, four people. Four people. Right now. Intralingual subtitling. What is intralingual subtitling? 
I really just want to use this. As you can see there, it is from the same language. So you translate from English into English or from Spanish into Spanish. In plain English, you watch a film in English with English subtitles. You watch a film in Spanish with Spanish subtitles. That is intralingual, you mean the same language. And then you've got interlingual subtitles, which is the standard subtitling we all know. You have the film in English and you've got the subtitles into your mother tongue, into Spanish. Or the other way around. You can have the film in Spanish and the subtitles in English. These are the two standard uh, ways of subtitling. There is a third one, which is not that um, common, but it's equally important. Subtitling for the deaf and part of hearing. should be developed as well. Why is it different? Because in this uh, variety, you have what YouTube calls closed captioning. Slam. Okay? So they, in the subtitle, you will capture not only the dialogue, but Okay, Why? Because the people cannot listen anything. Think about one thing, accessibility. Okay, this is something that you can also use to promote accessibility in your classes in case you have somebody with a uh, hearing impairment, for example. Now, just for you to know, this is the map where you have dummy countries and subtitling countries. There are statistics for this provided by the European Union. We know that subtitling countries traditionally have better command of foreign languages, where dummy countries, such as Spain or Italy, have traditionally been weaker in languages. There is an exception there, which is Germany, which is but German, German people are German. Maybe <laughs> more. No, there are, there are other things. You have to, this is just one of the reasons. The second reason, obviously, for the poor command of English and the Spanish population is that we have a very, very powerful language. In the Spanish, you can go to South America, you can go to Central America, you can go to Europe, you can go to Miami, you can go to many parts of the world. If you speak Croatian, the more powerful the language, the less uh, need. There is a statistic, and it's told me on this page, so I will. Um, Spain is the fourth country in the European Union, the fourth country in the European Union with the weakest um, command of foreign languages. So the rest of the countries speak better languages than we do. Which are the other three countries with the worst uh, figure, with worst statistics? France, 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 France. England, Malta, Ireland. What do these three countries have in common? The more powerful the language. And there is another thing, historically. You have books on this. Italy, Germany, Spain. They were three dummy countries traditionally. Why? Political reasons. Dictatorships. In Italy, they doubt everything. In Germany, they did, but Germans recovered very fast. Okay? This is just for you to know. Now, if you ask me about the basics of subtitling, things that you need to know in order to subtitle a video tape, it is very, very easy. Okay? First, you have two symmetric lines, maximum. The program, the software, is going to do it for you. But if you download illegal films or movies or whatever, uh, you will see that there is an amateur translation. So from time to time you will see a subtitle that is hiding part of the image, okay, which is very inconvenient. So traditionally, professional subtitles are two lines maximum, okay? Four to six seconds. It depends on if you are working with teenagers, they read slower. Okay, so I would say between five to seven seconds on the screen. Obviously, depending on the subtitle, if the subtitle is yes, then no. Okay, but the uh, <coughs> subtitle would be between four and six seconds, on average, on average. Three minute video. This is a, there is a lot of research on this. When you use videos for teaching foreign languages, they shouldn't exceed three minutes. This is the suitable time. It doesn't mean that you can watch, or you can uh, play a movie or whatever, but if you are doing listening comprehension, if you are doing subtitling, if you are using the video as a didactic tool, more than three, three minutes is too much. 
You want to subtitle something, choose very, very short clips. Because subtitling a clip is very uh, it is very exhausting. Okay? So 30 seconds is more than enough. You cannot subtitle 10 minutes. That is too much. That is a, a one-year project if you want. Why are taxes normally yeah? White and yellow are. Okay. So look for contrast in the screen. You cannot use what green subtitles when you are showing um, an Irish movie with green fields and that. Okay. And do not split sentences. That means that the monster wanted to eat the cook. You cannot do that. <laughs> then the brain says there is something which is not right. Okay, very simple. You need, I mean, you can have more and more rules, but with these basic rules that you can teach your students in five minutes, you can already subtitle. So subtitling and clear for subtitling in bilingual education. If you ask me why on earth should I use subtitling on a bilingual session, on a bilingual stream, on a bilingual class, I could give you many reasons, many reasons. There is research on that, I have uh, tested it myself, but I'm going to give you five, only five. First, and probably the most important, in my opinion, this is motivating. Your students will enjoy it, really. When I say they enjoy it, I mean it. They can go home and try to uh, subtitle by themselves. For me, that is already astonishing. Okay? They enjoy it. It is something that they like. Second, you can practice code switching. In clear, in bilingual education, there shouldn't be code switching. There has to be translanguage. We have to make sure that they command the both channels, the both codes, English and Spanish, which is a standard of whatever the language is. Basque and Spanish, it doesn't matter. They have to command both languages in the classroom. Use the two languages. There is no problem with that. They will have the standard uh, foreign language sessions for that. Even in the foreign language sessions, now that nobody is listening to us, you can use code switching from time to time. It is not a problem. Okay, so code switching uh, is a good strategy in okay. Third, they will develop subject specific literacies. If you are using a video on electricity, obviously you are going to be working with technical vocabulary on electricity technology, science, history, whatever. So for the visual support is fundamental, it is critical in developing uh, in fixing vocabulary. So they will develop specific uh, subject literacy with subtitle, which is again of paramount importance in clever. The forces, content, obviously whatever you are working with, science. Okay, you are playing a video on uh, the water cycle. Uh, communication. This is important. This is a very personal opinion. Okay, my colleagues uh, on technology might disagree, but if you are using technology in your classes, at least with subtitling, I strongly recommend they do not do it individually. I strongly recommend that do it, they do it in terms of work. They can learn with technology at home. They already work with technology on an individual fashion. But for this, I do strongly advice that they use uh, a group work study. Why? Because if not, there is no communication. There has to be communication. They have to speak in English. So this guarantees there is communication. So we said content, communication, cognition. Why cognition? Because they have to be thinking in the foreign language. Thinking in English is difficult. Do you know, we know this because of Cambridge and all the interviews, the typical stuff. Uh, do you have any brother or sister? Yes, I have brother or sister. Do you have any? So you play in this way. If you ask a student, háblame de las carreteras en Holanda, not because of the topic, because creating, thinking in the foreign language is always more challenging. So we are going to be working with higher order skills, not only basic skills. They have to hypothesize, they have to predict what is going to be happening in the video. I'm going to show it to you in a minute. And accessibility. Think about people with any human encounter. Okay? So motivating, code switching, the forces. The forces 
the screen here, you just upload the video, any format normally, and you play the video, okay? And here, in this part, you have your subtitles. The only thing you have to do is to add the subtitles and write them. That's it. Then, this is the most difficult part, you have to adjust it, okay? I'm not talking about synchrony, because this is a bit more complicated, but you can say, okay, this is going to appear in second two, and this is going to go off in second four, okay? And then you move. I'm going to explain it to you. This is a very simple software. The only problem is that it is not multi It only runs in Windows. Just for each time. And this is obviously for PC, not tablet, no mobile, no Mac. The second one is the one I'm going to be using today. It's IXR. It is exactly the same, but it runs on Mac OS. Here you have Apple, and also on PC, okay? It is very similar to the previous one. Perhaps a bit more intuitive, if I may. Uh, you have the screen here, you add the subtitles here. Are you put the name? Yeah, I have this In any case, I'm going to give you <clears throat> a handout where you have all the software, okay? I have this It is available for Mac, uh, PC, this is how it looks like. The one? This one? Again, this is open source software. You can download them. And even for Mac. Yeah, I have it there. And I have it. So this is how it looks like. The original one, okay? <coughs> This is the program. Here you've got the video, which can be obviously. You just add your uh, subtitles there, and then you move them. Okay. The only thing you have to do is to select one subtitle, and then you move it 
through the screen. And it, you drop there and it works. I chose I chose this one. Because, uh, I did it this morning. I'm sorry, I was just. But I don't know for no apparent reason they love Frozen. Everybody, I, I haven't watched it. I'm sorry, but. Very, very easy to use. So the only thing you have to do is to insert here, and then <clears throat> you put it there. I mean, it is very, very simple to use for students. So you just drag and drop. You take the subtitle and you put where it where you write. Sorry? Where do you write? I'm sorry, I just. Then you add the video. I mean, you don't need to, to, to upload the video. You write the subtitles, then you add the video, and the, the most challenging part is to obviously synchronize where does every part go, okay? Very good. If you ask me about all the tools, as I said, there are many. Okay, for mobile and for tablets. I'm going to mention three because they are probably the most popular and they are free as well. This is an actual <coughs> photos and videos. It is an app for, uh, I think, uh, give me a wrong complete. I think this is for uh, iPhone and Android, but I'm not sure. I think, I think it is multi platform. Uh, so you can just, for your mobile, you can check it now, uh, add subtitles to photographs, videos, and so on. Text on photos and videos. Another one is from the text on videos. Exactly the same. You have a video there, and you can just add it. You record yourself. Uh, the first one I'm sure about that. The second one I'm not sure. I'm, I'm going to check it now, okay? Well, if we can download it right now. So you can even record yourself and add some subtitles. This is something uh, kids like. Okay. And the third one is text on video. You will have this presentation available for you. Okay? If not, I will send it to you. No worries about that. The third one is text on video. Again, this is music and text on video. If you write subtitle in Google Play, in Android, in, in, in uh, iTunes, you will find many more applications. Okay. Most of them free. The question, data. No problem with that. Of course, be creative. You have access to no computer, you can do it on paper. They can sing the subtitles. I mean, there is not a problem. If you have no time, if you have any problem, we did it before. Okay? And you are going to do a subtitling activity now, probably without technology because we have no computers. Okay? So be creative with that. That is a message that you have to keep in mind. I'm going to show you an example, and then you are going to do it for the rest of the time. Okay? So this is something we did in two courses. First, this is about technology. Technology in the first course of secondary education. And we have also used it in science in the sixth course of primary education. I don't know if you have watched this one, yeah. Frank and Winnie. Everyone? No. Yeah. Could you, for those of you who have, you haven't watched it, could you make a review, 30 seconds? What is it about, Frank and Winnie? Like when you realize, I remember it was, it was about the, uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's like a, a, a new version of privacy, okay? But it focuses on a, on a dog, and he's a, he's a okay? It's a short film, very, very funny, and it's really part of uh, becoming a practice thing. Yeah. This is an animation movie by Kim Barton. He did the, the one with the real characters in the 80s, I don't remember. And he launched this 2012, I don't know. Uh, and this is really 2012. Uh, and this is a version, a new version of Frankenstein. Okay? So instead of the monster, what you have is a dog. 
Why did we use this? Well, first because of Frankenstein. So we uh, told them about the real book, which is great. Okay, Dracula, I don't like it at all. But Frankenstein is great. Dracula is very boring, but this one is not about a monster. Yeah. Frankenstein is about being different, about solitude, about a lot of things. Uh, it was written by Mary Shelley, a woman. She was betting with uh, Lord Byron, well, you cannot do this, I do, you don't. You don't. So she won. Uh, and it's a good book. Okay? Uh, in addition, it has a lot about science and technology because of electricity, bringing the uh, dog back to life. Okay? So, what did we do? First, as I said, this is about technology. So, we were working in particular with ICTs, obviously, and electronics, electricity. What did we do? This is classic, classic task based learning. There is no innovation there, obviously. So, we normally have a pre-wash, five minutes maximum, with, without sounds, without uh, sound, uh, English, Spanish, it doesn't matter. The important thing is that you do it. Some people do it uh, without sound, so they ask the students, what is going to happen when you stop the video? Okay, so you play, you work a little bit with uh, hypotheses, predictions, uh, forecasting, and so on and so forth. Then you play the video, full video, and then you ask them to subtitle. As I said before, we prefer to do this in pairs or in group work, not individual. So there is communication. They can subtitle if you have access to a computer room. They can subtitle if you are, if they are allowed to use the mobiles in your, in your school. They can subtitle uh, using a paper, okay? And then you can do it in your computer. You can ask them, this is what we can do today. You can go there and upload or write your, your subtitle because you have no computers here. Okay, so this is a possibility. And then, obviously, the post watch. You can ask questions, you can work with them specifically about comments. Another possibility, warming up, predicting, hypothesizing, making hypotheses, and so on. Um, working with uh, translanguaging and interpreting. We did at the beginning of the lesson. Watching the video with or without the audio. Summarize the main content of the video. Working with the characters, how they look like. This would be more for the obviously for the language uh, sessions. And any content activity. Forget about Frankie's or Frankie Will. Think about any video. The instructor could be the same. The model can be the same. We have worked with this and it worked pretty well. This, by the way, is no longer available, unfortunately. This was a charity in the United Kingdom, filmeducation.org, but you still can find contents in some places. Okay? Um, this was an organization devoted to promoting um, learning through audiovisual uh, resources. Okay? So, there are resources for this movie and for other ones which are incredibly well developed. This having been, this, this is not mine, okay? This is like film education. So, for example, talking about Frankenstein, uh, it is about electrical conductors and insulators. So, you have here a pineapple, a key, a rubber, fork, and so on. So metals, so children understand, or kids understand how electricity works. You have a lot of activities for this movie and from other ones, okay? They also, more importantly, you have uh, the teacher's book with this, okay? You have the solution for everything, which is also important. <coughs> you have something about science, how to make your own hair style in the fashion of, um, Frankenstein, uh, so it gives uh, instructions, which is very, very clear, okay? So how to do this step by step. And it is available through the web. We haven't done anything illegal, okay? This is there for you to download. And this is the last one about balanced and unbalanced forces. How forces work.
What are the advantages? So we did this in secondary education, also in primary education. And what are the main advantages? What can you get with subtitling activities or with this project? First, as I said before, the forces are clearly reinforced. You have cognition, they are thinking in the foreign language. They are thinking in their <coughs> language. So they are thinking in both codes. Culture, in our case, it was Frankenstein. It was a book about an animal, about the monster, Mary Shelley, we told them a lot of things about Frankenstein. Communication, they have to speak to each other. And, I think I did it the other way around, contents, electricity in this case, insulators, and so on. You are really, which is the most difficult part of play, integrating content and knowledge. Content is in the video, okay? And language is obviously what you are doing with the subtitle. You are working with the L1 and the L2. You are working with the foreign language and the other language. So you are integrating both things at the same time. I'm not going to be talking about collaborative work because Elena explained it um, yesterday. But this is something that can be already connected to this project. As I said before, you stimulate cognition in the foreign language. They have to think how to make a subtitle in the other. So it is not only answering questions by the teacher. It is not only filling the gaps. Okay, they have to do something which is creative in the foreign language, which is something extremely difficult to do. Obviously, they are going to be using ICTs proactively, whether mobile phones, tablets, software, or whatever they use, but they are going to be using ICTs. I'm not going to be um, going into this very much, but this is probably the most interesting part, okay? although I do not want to get technical. You know that there is a difference between what Cummings said, basic interpersonal communication skills, the type of language we need for everyday conversation, day-to-day -day language, and cognitive academic language proficiency, language for Education, study. Okay? When you are working with bilingual education, when you are working with clear, it is extremely important that you take this chart into account. You can just go Google it and you will have it. When you introduce a concept, a new concept, in history, geography, music, drum, science, whatever, language should be easy. Our brain is no work to work at the same time with difficult language and difficult comments. When you introduce new things that they don't know, language has to be known to them. Progressively, when they already command the comments, then you can, and we have an expert there on, on this, I know he's going to talk tomorrow about something completely different, but really it works. Our brain is limited. We have two gigabytes of power if you want. Okay? So you cannot ask the students, you cannot ask anybody to start working with difficult language and difficult comments. Okay? So the best thing is to start with new concepts and easy language. By easy language, I'm referring to language they know or they should know. How you make sure? You can give them handouts, you can prepare them with uh, vocabulary or glossaries, whatever. But take this into account because in many cases we have seen that classes fail because of this. This, again, is the second time I use it. Be creative. I'm telling you this because my own experience. When we did this experiment, we failed miserably. It was a failure. Why was it a failure? Because children do unexpected things, always. They do things that they are not supposed to do. We started with this project. We asked students of first course of secondary education to subtitle. Okay? They had to be subtitling from Spanish into English and from English into Spanish. They had to subtitle the video. What the video said, they had to uh, transform it into subtitles. And we learned that they were not doing that. They were misbehaving. What do I mean? This. I'm sure you have watched Bruno Hans doing Hitler's downfall many times, ordering a pizza, um, asking about PlayStation, complaining <coughs> about Apple, whatever. What were kids doing? They were creating alternative subtitles. <laughs> Nothing to do. My colleagues were devastated. They thought that we are a failure. It is true. But we discovered something. 
eclipse. This was not our intention. Some of the teachers were even angry. Believe me, eclipse. Why? They were creating, yeah, they were misbehaving. They were creating alternative subtitles. But they were doing, they were doing that English. They were communicating in English. And they were doing some, they were practicing their creativity in English. That is extremely difficult to get. Believe me. This is what we call mashups. Okay? You have rural runs in downfall. You have, sorry for not the academic, for a non academic reference, uh, the citrus <laughs> in Apple. Um, go to Google and you will find a lot of them. So they can <laughs> take a video from any politician, Cristiano Ronaldo, whatever, talking and subtitling it in, in three weeks. What is the problem? Yes, it is not subtitling, it is something else. But it worked. And it worked very really well. In fact, I mean, we did some, some research on that. This was the most uh, beneficial activity in terms of motivation, vocabulary, vocabulary appreciation, and even context. So this is the vocabulary which works better. So what do There is not a problem there. Let them be creative. Okay? Now, for the rest of the time, we are going to work on two activities. Let's see how we handle this, okay? Because the most important is the second one. The first one is just a test. The second one is the main thing today. But I just wanted you to try this subtitling thing. What is the problem? I know, we have no computers, okay? So you can do it on paper, you can do it using your mobile. You can just, for the next 10 minutes, try to download some of the applications and see how they work. Play a little bit with it. But this is what I would like you to do. Practice subtitling something. This is free stuff. So you can do intralingual subtitling from English into English, not from Spanish into Spanish, that is all. Okay? Interlingual subtitling from Spanish into English or the other way around. You can, you can even dub things. I was not talking about dubbing because this is slightly different, but there are also very good applications for dubbing. Okay, you're calling things. It is up to you. What I would like you to do is to work in small groups. You can work in the groups you were working in half an hour ago, or the ones you were this morning. It is up to you. And you have 15 minutes to try to subtitle or try to subtitle in a Or just watch a video and try to subtitle in a <coughs> Okay? Is it there? Let's say 20 minutes. In this situation, you want to work. Always want to do that. It's time for the to stop. This activity right now, I'm sorry about this, but we want to, to, to move to the next one. Uh, I have given to you a handout where you put uh, the top part, it has several videos. I didn't mention it, but this is an interesting alternative for you. So in this video, you have no dialogue, no dialogue at all, okay? Uh, they are voices, they, they have music. So what is the point there? Uh, you can work with storytelling. So either narrating it with a voice or subtitling it, but they do not have to translate or to subtitle dialogues. It is absolutely free. Creativity. We, uh, these uh, videos are the recommendation of a colleague of mine who is an expert on storytelling, and I think they work very well. Most of them are from Pizza, I think I haven't watched before. Below, you've got the references for the software we have been using. As you have uh, already seen, um, well, there is a problem with the Wi-Fi, that is the first thing you have noticed. And second, um, in mobile phones, uh, in portable devices, probably dubbing applications are better. I mean, subtitling is more intuitive on laptops and PCs than mobile phones. So mobile phones, dubbing is going to be better. Okay? Now, we are going to go to the last activity. For this one, you don't need computers, okay? You just need to think. This is what I would like you to do. What I would like you to do right now is to think about how could you, as teachers of secondary education, how could you implement this into one sub? So, I want you to design a task, an activity, or a project. They need to account that they have 20 minutes, okay? So you can choose the subject. It doesn't have to be in technology. You can take the subject you want. Why? Because this is a technique. I mean, this subtitling thing, this translation thing, is in technology. This is a technique which is cross-cut. This is transversal. It can be used in any subject. That is the advantage. 
The disadvantage is that you need technology, and sometimes it will let you down. Okay. So what I would like you to do right now is to think about an activity in which you use subtitling for any subject. That's it. You have to think about the possible video. You have to think about how would you use subtitling, English, Spanish, creating subtitling. You can think about the contents you would like to associate uh, to this task. Okay? Is it more or less clear? You've got there the information. Think about any activity. Be creative. I know that you are working now uh, probably in non-standard roles with people from, so you will have to reach an agreement. Okay? What subject would you like to choose? Any subject. I have 20 minutes on that. Okay, no more minutes. I would like some of you to come here and present what you have come up with. Is that okay? You need no computer stuff. Okay? I'm sorry if I have no more time. You were looking for the fully gray This is just a technique. Okay, this is one possibility. One pedagogical possibility. But this is not the this is just a message. I mean, as long as students work with content and language, uh, <laughs> as long as that really needs some <laughs> I would try to be paid with the problem of that. Well, as long as it works with content and language, it works. Okay? Now, the question is, uh, are there any volunteers? Because if there are no volunteers, we'll be volunteers. <laughs> I don't need to... Are there volunteers? I know that a couple of groups have very good ideas. Any ideas? Uh, we were thinking about well, uh, because uh, I'm economics, so I am teaching English for uh, administrative uh, students. So we were thinking into creating all the activities that would have been missing today. So we were thinking that maybe we could do something about customer service. So we were planning to have groups where we have to create a customer service situation that is a role play that mm -hmm. afterwards they record it and they create the subtitles. And the idea is that we introduce drama because they have to, to do it. Uh, because the other ones can also uh, subtitle the ones that they have been recorded and they have to be very expressive in order that the other ones try to understand what is going on. So that is will be the final product. It will be a video with subtitles that we have recorded and we have not played themselves. And uh, the idea is that uh, what else? Ah, in the groups there will be different roles, and there will be one person that is going to be uh, in charge of looking for the keywords and expressions that in this in this uh, topic there is very concrete expression that should know and it is a way to reinforce some of them to memorize very really well. So when people will be working with the key expressions and key vocabulary, other ones are going to the actors, they can work together with the people that are going to write the script or the what is the possible dialogue and they are going to introduce the keywords and then when they have the final product, that is the video, we upload it, the other ones can watch it, or they even can have it, and they can use it to write what they think they are doing. Okay? So what is going, what is going to be the complaint, how they are going to give the a compensation for the complaint, and so on and so on. <laughs> Ours is not so much developed, <laughs> but where it is an activity 
for, I think, first, second year secondary education. It is connected to where it involves science, I think more chemistry than biology, but science in any way, a technology and English. And the idea is that they have to do an experiment. In this case, the experiment will be that they have a glass of water, they put an egg, and they see that the egg goes to, to the bottom. Then they have to add salt, and the, the egg will float. So they have to do the experiment, and at the same time, they have to record the experiment, and then they have to add subtitles. And in the subtitles, what they work is they have to describe the process and use sequencing uh, words. Like, first, I am doing this, then I am doing this, next, finally. And at the end of the video, they have to explain why this is happening. And for that, they have to be creative. You know, for the explanation, this is free. They can do as, as they want. So uh, the content of science is, uh, is about volume, density, um, weight, and also buoyancy, the, and preparing solutions, because at the end they are preparing a solution. The content connected to English is sequencing work and describing the process, and connecting with technology, recording, and editing, ed editing the video. And so these are the things that then we are going to analyze and we are going to take into account for the assessment. We are going to assess uh, that all the grammar and vocabulary is correct, uh, the process of editing, and also that they have understood what they are doing, that they have done it well, and that they really understand what is happening and are able to, to explain it. In a very, and also creativity, the way they try to explain what is happening. Uh, it's also going to, to be evaluated. And we haven't thought about how we are going to distribute the, the work. We forgot about this. But uh, I think that one student will be the, the one that is going to, to film everything, to record. So it, it will be in charge of the video. Another student will be the scientist. And the other one can do the final part, the, the explanation of what is happening. Thank you. 
support their own language. That's uh, they're free to do it. And that, uh, as we've got enough teacher there, we are going to uh, find out something about the money that is spent on the wedding and all that. Depending on the level of the students, if they are uh, the simple ones, maybe if they use numbers properly, it's enough, or you know, depends on, I don't know the about math, so. Uh, to um, deal with fixability, we are going to uh, ask uh, some students to in, uh, investigate, to search for uh, uh, the, the history of the royal family. Maybe uh, uh, they can draw a, a, a tree or something, a family tree, for homework. Because we don't have work of So, and the other one, that's real life. And the other ones, the first <coughs> are going to write down the summary um, about uh, what they saw, what they really understood, and everything. And they will uh, give us the summary, so we give them one. So we let them to give them for everything they do. That's all. Okay. We all right. Second, translation is a technique, this is a technology to say, okay? but it can be effectively used as many others, not on a standard basis, but from time to time as a good uh, resource in your teaching, the same as technology. You know that these two things combined can contribute to uh, student motivation. More importantly, I think we could all agree on this, this is what we have been uh, underlining for these two days, with this different uh, 
You have to be creative. We have to be creative. We are creative because if you were not uh, creative, you wouldn't be in fiction. Okay, why is it that important? Because we know that creativity indeed increases our students' motivation. And that is the most important thing. In order to wrap this up, I have this sentence by Ben Sander, which is absolutely magnificent from my point of view. Ben Sander is, uh, as you probably know, the director of uh, Boston Philharmonic Orchestra, and he says this. This is our main part. If you are able to get that your students are inspired, are motivated, and learn languages, that is our job. Thank you all very much. Thank you.